Every day on the internet, you'll come across some hack or DIY to help with your day-to-day -day activities. But perhaps the most ambitious attempt at a hack is the Great Green Wall of Africa, the wall that seeks to hack the Sahara Desert. The Great Green Wall of Africa is an attempt at stopping the creeping deforestation moving from northern to southern Africa, from Senegal in West Africa to Djibouti in East Africa. The wall stretches 8,000 kilometers, thus giving it an area of 120,000 square kilometers. With this area, the wall is just larger than the country of Malawi and just smaller than North Korea as the 98th largest country. It would also trump the Great Barrier Reef to become the largest living structure on the planet. And speaking of Trump, the Great Green Wall would definitely make the ex-US president jealous. But unlike his wall and the walls we've known in history, this wall is not built to keep out immigrants, white walkers, titans. This wall is being built to bring the African people closer together. There's the Sahara region in the north of Africa, which is characterized by large sand dunes, very low vegetation and low rainfall as well. Then there's the savanna region, covering most of southern Africa, characterized by wide open grassy plains and woodland teeming with wildlife. The savanna also envelops the rainforest, which has high rainfall rate, characterized by dense jungle. But there is another layer separating the Sahara from the savanna and that area is known as the Sahel, a semi-desert region with minimal rainfall and sparse vegetation. The Sahel is the transitioning of the savanna into the Sahara, which happens to be expanding. The world's largest hot desert, with around 9.2 million square kilometers and covering over 25% of Africa, is expanding. In fact, this induced change in climate can be proven by the fact that Sahara Desert was once green. This was discovered by Heinrich Barth in the 19th century through cave paintings he saw in Timbuktu. These cave paintings depicted different vegetation, livestock and therefore a different way of life. This period dating back 9000 years ago was called the African Human Period and signified a period where the Sahara was in fact green. The implications of this discovery led to the understanding of the fate of the continent if it was left unchecked and the necessity of the wall, like the necessity of a lettuce in a burger. The Great Green Wall would pass through 11 countries in the Sahel region including Senegal, Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, Nigeria, Chad, Sudan, Eritrea, Ethiopia and Djibouti. The project spearheaded by the African Union involves the use of trees in a mosaic across the breadth of the continent on the border of the Sahel region. Trees being used like the acacia are mostly drought resistant and are able to hold gallons of water in their roots. In addition to providing moisture, these trees also provide shade for smaller plants, consequently help restoring the vegetation of the region around it. There is still a long way to build the wall as billions of dollars are required but it would be a bit basic to say all the wall does is grow some grass and tell the desert shall not pass! The Sahara Desert is very dry and has recorded some of the hottest temperatures on Earth, over 50 degrees Celsius. In fact, most of the areas in North Africa are uninhabited and over the years, as the desert moved south, people moved with it. This led to the Sahel becoming a hotbed for several African tribes, as well as the meeting place for Africa's two major religions, Islam and Christianity. This was compounded even further with the formation of colonies and countries during the period of colonization and decolonization, with the use of arbitrary lines like a Thanksgiving knife on Turkey. Mm. African countries were formed, separating tribes from one another and joining them with opposing tribes. As a result, the Sahel is still one of the most violent regions of the world today. But it could get even worse as more and more migration is occurring in the Sahel as people search for jobs and means of livelihood. Meanwhile, the same region is expected to double in size, up to 196 million by 2050. And in this same region, water bodies serving millions of people are drying up, with the biggest example being Lake Chad, which has shrunk down to 10% of its original size in the past decades. This is why the Great Green Wall is not only going to help with the growth of the vegetation in the Sahel, it is also going to improve the quality of life of its people. This is already happening in countries like Senegal, where several villages have seen a growth in job opportunities, as well as reduced migration, while some places have also reported that dry wells have begun to fill up again. When completed, the wall will accomplish 15 out of 17 sustainable development goals set out by the UN, including food security, fertile land, health and well-being, sustainable energy, poverty alleviation, gender equality and more. To put it simply, the Great Green Wall of Africa could be the newest wonder of the world. And for the first time ever, a wall could be built, not to keep people out, but to bring them together. That's the fun part of the story. 
that we really should be focusing on because the world needs more trees. Back to the Green Wall of Africa. Yes, enormous amounts of trees have been planted and it has been making a difference, but focusing mostly on the trees and stopping the Sahara is missing the point, as the Sahara Green Wall is more complex than just lettuce in a hamburger. Misconception 1. While the Sahara does advance on its own, due to natural climate cycles caused by Earth tilting along its axis as it orbits the Sun, most researchers have confirmed that it's greatly exacerbated by human activity. In other words, the growth of population and the necessity to rear more livestock is essentially what is causing the desert to expand. So the desert itself is not some evil entity that needs to be stopped, but rather a real ecosystem and an important part of our planet, balancing the Earth's climate and contributing to our culture. Misconception 2. Desertification cannot simply be halted by planting trees to stop the desert at the outskirts of civilization. Trees are not the only solution or the way that the wall will be implemented, and as such they will likely represent just a part of the green wall. The use of water, soil, flora, fauna all need to be considered and implemented where appropriate, so it's not really going to be a massive wall of trees. And due to the massive variability of the climate, it really can't be. Misconception 3. That the Sahara is advancing in a straight line, all across the African continent. Desertification is a diffused local phenomenon, does not always pose the most severe impact in the regions that border it. In a lot of places there is no spread and in regions with lots of pastoral activity and unchecked agriculture, there is. Misconception 4. The Great Green Wall will be planted in sparsely populated areas, far away from main cities and hubs. In fact, the proposed trajectory is to pass through an inhabited regions where agriculture and livestock farming are fully developed. Misconception 5. The Great Wall of Africa is the first ever major attempt at halting desertification. In fact, China and Algeria have had their own initiatives that long predate Africa. In 1978, Chinese authorities launched a large-scale management program over a vast area mostly bordering Mongolia. A simple mistake to make is to assume that this line was meant to stop the Gobi Desert. This was not the main goal of the Chinese authorities, who are most mindful of the fact that desertification is linked to vegetation and soil degradation. In 1989, President Deng Xiaoping named the Great Green Wall by referencing it to the ancient Green Wall of China. To underline the scope of the work, comparable to that of the construction of the wonder. Aim was to sidestep the adverse effects of land degradation that was causing dust storm in Chinese cities, and the government had planned for annual expenditures of 60 billion yuan for the tree planting campaigns. There were, however, many problems encountered in the field, the biggest of which was that many of the species of trees that they were trying to introduce could not survive. They learned that variables in climate soil and relief needed to be taken into account. Since they weren't, it led to high tree mortality rates, so the scientists stressed the importance of using local species adapted to the local climates rather than forcing trees which had little chance of long-term survival. Since the 1970s, Algeria has been involved in a national so-called green barrier, intended to halt desertification along the edge of northern Sahara. Initially, it was a civil engineering pine reforestation program carried out by the army on an arid and a massive pastoral belt. The results were however below expectations with a planting success rate of only 42% in a 20 year long project. So the project was abandoned in the early 1990s but was relaunched in 1995 with a new strategy in favour of mixed vegetation and crops that would help contribute to the income of the local residents. So knowing these facts, the Great Green Wall of Africa was not designed as a wall of trees crossing the Sahara, but rather as a set of multi-sectoral initiatives and interventions to ensure natural resource conservation and protection with the aim of fighting poverty. So no, stopping the desert is a lot more complicated than just planting a bunch of trees, and Africa isn't as simple as a hamburger. And it is perhaps for this reason that it is so time-consuming and challenging a task, as local governments need to act and implement policies to preserve the soil. It's impossible to just go out there overnight, plant millions of trees and expect them to miraculously grow and stop desertification, as already has been proven and shown by the Chinese and Algerians. Available studies and research confirm the need to develop an approach that integrates agricultural and pastoral activities with the aim of preserving the environment and promoting sustainable land development and combining different forms of reforestation. So the Great Green Wall probably isn't going to be some great wonder. A magnificent wall of trees imposing on a desert is mentioned earlier. But if it is implemented, it could change the lives of millions of residents of the Sahel. And it could prevent the current migration crisis, as people will no longer be looking to escape the region if their livelihoods were not threatened. The necessity of the Green Wall and major investments into the Sahel becomes most apparent when considering the political stability of the region and its rapidly expanding population. Now if you'd like to support this channel, please watch another video. 
How about understanding the conflict in Somalia? It's a super friendly comment section. Now guess where this is in the comment section below and I will see you soon. Geo Perspective out.